right now we are building the studio. It uh, is quite incomplete. This entire basement used to be just like a cold cellar storage room. I really wanted a place to record, but I also didn't want my uh, family to hear what I was saying. So I'm gonna finish that back wall. I wanna maybe start doing the ceiling, doing the side wall. Got some really glue. The one that I usually use wasn't there, so I'm trying this new white one out. Usually what I like to do is, because uh, these are concrete walls, so it doesn't really stick too well. So I use this adhesive spray. I don't think you're supposed to inhale this. Does it say? Do not breathe fumes. Heard. Honestly, this makes me feel like I'm, I'm spray painting. This is no paint. How does that look? You guys can't even see it. Let me show you what I was talking about. Looking in that corner. I want to get this. Looking spiffy. When I was like talking to myself and I was like, yo, I don't know if uh, this is the best choice. I don't know if you can do this. Because my first song changes. That song was like, that wasn't even the song I was going to release. I was going to release another one called, um, it was called something. No, it wasn't called something, but I don't know what it was called. I was too hesitant about releasing a song because lyrically there was so much like content in it and it was like great and all, but at the same time I felt like it's not what I wanted to leave behind. I was like, man, but I don't have a strategy that I've created yet. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And after one day when I was in the studio, this is a beautiful thing that I'm working on right now. I was like, bro, if you don't release that, you're never gonna release it. You're never gonna do it. Essentially, we don't know what happens, so we have to do what we want to do. We have to be who we want to be in the time that we have so that we don't miss out on life. Um, I didn't tell anybody that I was dropping anything. The support that I got after I released was tremendous. I was very shocked. I thought that I thought nobody would care. People would think that I was strange for wanting to pursue music. But people cared. <laughs> Not that that's what it was about, but um, it was just nice to see that if I hadn't released it, released that track, a lot of the opportunities that I have been exposed to wouldn't have occurred. If you have a flat tire, people are more inclined to help you or support you in this case once you start to help yourself. If you wait for people to support you, they never will. There's this uh, motivational speaker that says, why are, you, um, why are you waiting for people to support you? It's your game. Why should they support your game? You should be supporting your game. One thing that I realized is like, the people that you thought would support you don't really support you, or they're more indifferent. And there's two reasons for that. The first reason is that they're so used to the old you that this vision of you is almost like you're not being real. And the second reason is that you haven't put in enough work for them to support you. But either way, the reality of the situation is that you gotta work harder. You gots to grind. You gots to grind. For a long time, maybe like two and a half years, I didn't post anything on social media because I didn't know what to post. I thought that the content that I was posting wasn't giving value. I thought I just didn't post anything. But you can't exactly do that. You've got to show people what you're about. If this is what I want to do, I have to start somewhere. I have to do something. I have to be willing to accept the fact that I'm not going to be good. The fact that I'll get better over time. Yeah, we did. I wrote a poem, and one of the lines in the poem said, How do you expect to perfect your craft if you craft nothing? I can't be so conscious of what people think that I don't do anything at all. It's like we're scared of what other people think. That's why we hesitate to do anything. So, this is how much I have left to do. I just went to uh, K and Tyre to grab some more adhesive spray because I ran out yesterday. We're just about to get started. Good old Teddy's uh, dead, I think. He's keeping me company. Oh, he's alive. If you had told me a couple years ago that this is where I'd be right now, I would not believe you. <laughs> I'm pretty glad for where I am right now. I feel like you kind of have to be like, you can't really appreciate the life that you want without appreciating the current life that you have. Life kind of gives us lessons or like specific tasks or challenges, kind of like a game that you have to complete in order to get to the next level. But if you don't get past that that level, then life's like, you ain't ready to move on. If I put you against these big bosses, you're gonna die. Oh, life's over. We're out. You 
never know who you're gonna meet. You never know when you're gonna meet them. You never know what you're gonna do. Like, you may have a plan, but life's always like, yeah, you know that plan that you thought you had? Well, joke's on you, because that plan isn't meant for you. The bottom wall is almost complete. Yes! There's some frequencies in certain parts of this room that hold sound in a weird way. Like, some parts are louder, some parts are quieter. When recording, it affects the recording. So I want to, uh, I wanted to do this, A, because it will produce a better sound, and B, it's easier to create in an environment where you feel creative. I think relaxation is one of the key things when it comes to creativity. With creativity, a lot of the times, I don't know what people think, but before I, almost died. Before I used to think that uh, creativity was more mind. You have to think of all these ideas and whatnot. But then I realized you have to let the ideas come to you because when they come, you have to accept them and organize them. That's, that's your job. Your job is to raise your idea as if it was a child. It has a life of its own. It's a personality of its own. Your job is just to allow it to flourish in your presence. You don't really create the idea, the idea comes to you. Whenever I'm stuck on a line in a song or something, I'll always be like, just listen. Just listen and wait for it. There's this really great book called Big Magic. It talks a lot about how ideas travel. There was this interview, they were talking about how Michael Jackson called up his producer at like three o'clock in the morning because he had an idea and he wanted to execute the idea because he was scared that Prince was gonna copy it and do the same thing. It's kind of crazy to think that, um, that ideas are living things. I sound like I'm 47 when I talk like that. I feel like I look young but talk old. Anything that helps me grow, that's the stuff I like talking about. These nowadays, a lot of people don't want to talk about that, and that's okay. Those people are not my people. They are not my people. No. A lot of people didn't see the studio when it was just starting off. They only see once I add these pieces, that's all they see. It's kind of like you. Some people walk into your life when like half your room is done. I used to work at Jump Plus, and when I was working there, I really wanted um, the MacBook Pro 2016, because I really wanted to make music on it. I remember saying to myself at one point, you're gonna get it, just just wait. Because the one that I wanted to get was like the used one. They have on like open box one, or if there's any issues with them, then you're able to get them on a discount. My eyes were set on a lower standard for myself. That didn't happen. I ended up getting uh, fired from that job. I never got the opportunity to get that 2016 MacBook Pro with the HDMI port. But then the M1 MacBooks came out and I uh, saved up and got one of those. I think one of the coolest things is sometimes what we want for ourselves is not what we deserve. Like we deserve more, but we, we want or settle for less. Sometimes life doesn't give us that because it knows we deserve more. Like we always get something no matter what. We never go into any situation and not receive anything. Life is always giving. But how you see it is what you get. If you see getting fired as a negative thing, then you're going to be sitting in negativity. If you see it as an opportunity to align with something that resonates more with your personality and the type of person you are, then that's what you get. Life is always working on our side. I think it's us that goes against life. Like, have you ever had those moments where, you know, something was telling you, yeah, you should do this, but you're like, nah. It's been about a person or a situation or a job. You're like, nah. Let me, let me test it out and really see if this is my intuition speaking. And you test it out and you find out. <laughs> you find out the hard way that it was your intuition. I think cultivating that is a, a very interesting process. Very interesting. Damn, boy, you stick fast. You guys, don't come at me for my Trinidadian accent. I promise you, it's not good. Ugh. Sometimes mistakes are a good thing. Like some artists do this as practice where they tell people to draw random lines on the page and they try to create a picture. There's another one, shout out to my grade seven teacher, Miss Demberling from Sunnyview. She uh, introduced me to this, what's it called? When you put your pencil on the page and you don't lift it up and you try to make a drawing like that. And during that class, she encouraged everybody to draw whatever because there's not really any mistakes. And I think giving the freedom to yourself of being able to test out and try out different things allows you the opportunity to get closer to that, that final image of perfection that you have. We gonna do the ceiling next. I'm just taking time to fill in those uh, areas. I'm just taking the little, I only had like one left over. So I'm just taking this and putting it inside there. Just gotta do this panel, the ceiling right there. This door is done, gotta do this panel right here. 